It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the PS5000. It's like one of the new generation of budget handhelds. And yup, it's budget. It's not like cheap to the cheap cheap, but it's still budget. Okay guys, so but what is this PS5000? It's very simple, it comes with 10 different simulators. And what I find quite interesting is this device is still a cheap product. It's slightly, let's say more expensive than the X series, but it's most of the time cheaper than like the high-end stuff from Embernic. And why I think it can be an interesting product because we're going to get two joysticks. It comes with a normal D-pad. It has functionality for adding a controller. And yeah, it comes with a professional chip. Ooh. But here at the parameters, we can find some more information. An operating system is a Linux. We have seen this before with like plug and play for let's say the mini arcade machines. It only having, let's say 256 megabytes. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Flash 128 megabytes. And the resolution is 960 by 544 when it comes to the screen resolution. The emulator itself runs up to N64, but I can already tell you it's a freaking lie because N64 is very difficult to emulate, and especially on cheap devices with such basic specifications. They are bringing these things with three different handhelds. And you can see like they always try to mimic the Switch somehow, but that's not what we're going to do today. If I'm, if I'm recalling it correctly, I ordered the yellow one. Yep, they sent me the right one. So the packaging itself looks kind of nice. They did a very nice job. You're getting better at it, like picking it up with better boxes. People love collecting these things. It's very convenient. It even comes with HDMI cable because this thing has HDMI functionality. Because what you can do with it, and that is what we're going to try out, is that we can use this thing like a game system. Ha, finally. We're going to get the option for reading this actually like in English. Let's have a five inch IPS OLED screen. I don't believe it, it is an OLED screen, but at least an IPS display. So this thing is slightly difficult to find simply because they are like not super common. But I found one and I'm hoping in the future we can still find one because this thing is not really bad. But look what we're going to get at the bottom. And I'm not talking about the basic... Is it? What is it? Ah, micro USB cable. Now we're talking about this, the controllers. And that's what I find very interesting. You can just plug this thing into your television with HDMI, connect to controllers, and you can have a lot of fun together with your friends. And that is more like a two one option, or like a switch idea, like not really with the docking station, but you can use it like a handheld and also like a game system. Sadly, the controls, oh boy, these things are like too tiny for my hands. The buttons feel really flimsy, slack star, the D-pad is super sturdy, and ah, oh, come on man, this analog stick is a completely different position, more like, and it's even like a freaking horrible PSP knockoff slider joystick. Ah, comes with a micro USB connection, but nevertheless, I really don't like these things. Alright, so let's see what's inside. Yeah. Let's take a close look at the handheld itself. So, what I already told you, like, it comes with a normal D-pad, and this D-pad, I think you can see it on the camera, right? like it's a very high D-pad. It got this nice curve, so it gets a little bit better. Let's say it comes with a better touch. So like, I like it. It's like for a very long travel. Two analog sticks, like Nintendo Switch. The ABXY feel very nice. We're going to get at the top, we're going to get four shoulder buttons. So we're going to need, every, yeah, we're going, I think we're going to get enough buttons to play some PlayStation 1, for example. On and off, HDMI out, micro port, USB 1 and 2. And the reason for the controllers, the TF card, audio, headphone jack out. And I think we can use the first one for also charging the system. So at the back, we're going to get two speaker holes. I'm curious if we're going to get actually like two speakers. So that's it, folks. So there is nothing much to say about it. Volume control over here, select like start. Yeah. It's very nice. So let's boot it up and let's see what we're going to get. All right. So first of all, they were not lying about the LCD display or this IPS screen. Look at this. It looks freaking amazing. So this is something you don't see very often with these budget devices. So we can see like we found a rear gem. So the menu itself, it's similar to the arcade machine I've reviewed. And it's like, the, oh man, I really hate this. Like the shortcuts are weird. You cannot change them out. And if the file gets corrupted, you have like a dead link that doesn't work anymore. So over here, we can play the games. Uh, finally, it takes some time to load up. Here I made some folders for you. So you can drop in the files. You can listen to music, watch pretty picture, 
watch another movie if you want to. Did it add anything? You can hear like it beeping, but it doesn't do anything. The file browsing is needed, so if you want to get, let's say, into the SD card, if it's possible with this part, you can do it. You can do it! You can do it now! But somehow it doesn't display the source, and that's kind of weird in my opinion. But at overall, like the language settings. So you need to press twice, really annoying. We have quite some different language settings. Theme settings, ooh. Ooh, I like, oh wait, I like this dark one. Uh, this is like more the power saving mode. Let's see, normally on. Key tune, which change out. Ah, that sounds like a PlayStation Portable. Ah, I like it. Let's leave it to that. Restore default settings and the system menu. It's still number one. And this device is for 2021. So what you need to take consideration with this device, if you want to upgrade the firmware, so far I know there is nobody in the community who is working with this. Yeah, it's such a big bummer. By the way, what I really hate about this is this PS5000 at the front. Why not put it on the back or something? Because this is really annoying. So these software work with the option like pressing select and start and you can I mean, to get the quick load, quick menu. Uh, quick load, quick save, I mean, I need to say it correctly, quick load, quick save. And the reason why you can go out of the game, but also you can make a quick load, quick save. But there is no expert ratio and the only thing you can do is mess around with the controls if you have any problems with the controller you're attaching to it or the internal controls. But yeah, that's it, what you're going to get. So let's try some games. Okay guys, so the first one is of course PlayStation 1. I just want to get into the high-end stuff, just see how it runs. Music sounds very nice. Okay, so let's see if they map the buttons correctly. Nope. They are always seem to messing up. Like they're always like switching the A and B and X and Y. I don't see any hiccups. And I hate that we cannot change out the XPS ratio. But the game seems to be running really smooth. Okay, so next up, let's try Super Famicom. So fun fact, like with the really cheap to the cheap devices, the X series, we are always having issues. Okay, I need to find my buttons. What a weird combination. But uh, yeah, the problem is with the X series and we all have a lot of issues. And we don't have these with the PS5000. But again, no expert ratio option, so we have widescreen turtles. Yep. To be honest, I don't really find the D-pad comfortable to play. And I think it's a combination of the long travel and... I want to have the D-pad over here, so I always need to cramp up my thumb to play, so... Hmm... I do hear a minor... Minor stuttering in the music. Point. Let's make it a kick fight. Mm. Scorpion wins. So when it comes to MAME, it does have the option maybe to run PlayStation 1 and MAME very well. But it still have always limitation when it comes to MAME. You cannot run like the high-end stuff. Think about Tekken, Killer Instinct, the really high-end stuff. Old school MAME stuff will just such will just run fine. All right, so let's open it up. So these devices are mostly plastic, fantastic. And I mean with this, like, they are like having plastic shells and they are like basically clicked all together. The four screws you can see over here are like keeping the shells together. It's more like an extra support. Ooh, here it comes. Breaking the seal, breaking the seal. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wicked is naughty now. Let's get the screws out and Let's see what kind of goodies do you got inside. Prior to time. But even that these devices are clicked together, like they did a very nice job. You can see like I have a lot of problems opening it up. Okay, so let's be very gentle with this. Um, 
let's see if I can keep it in one piece. All right. Yep. Let it go. Let it go. I need to turn it around. Okay, so let's open it up, my friends, and let's see what we're going to get inside. So, first of all, what I find quite interesting that we're finally going to get two speakers. I must say, the quality wise, it goes very loud, but I don't have like the idea like that we're going to get actually like two speakers. I don't have the stereo sound going on. Like, what I do like about it, like, finally they didn't solder it to the main board over here because there's just a really common problem. Because most of the time they are soldering it and not using like connectors like these. Uh, I cannot tell how big this battery is, but the way how they assemble it is kind of cheesy in my opinion. Like they just slapped it in. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So let's take a close look at here. So that's kind of funny. Like they are yellow in the inside. We can just remove it. What I do like about this is that we can just basically say, hey, we can remove this, get yourself a new battery and maybe get a bigger one. The, the options, if you need to swap it out, you can do it fairly easy. All right, so in this device, they are using the Rockchip, the RK3128. Nowadays, the new generation of devices do have the option for the Rockchip. The sound, yeah, what I already mentioned a couple of times, the downside to this device is that we cannot add new emulators or firmware. So what you see, what you're going to get. And maybe they're not even using the Rockchip to the full potential because they're using like maybe old emulators. Who knows? We cannot see. But what I find interesting is that they're using like the rock chip, but the downside is like with the emulator and everything. Finding replacements for this device will be a pain in the butt. If you're going to get messing up like a ribbon cable, maybe you can find these, but finding parts for these devices is always like mission impossible in my opinion. But yeah, I just want to give you a peek in the inside just to see what you're going to get. So let's go on with the show. So by putting it back together, it's fairly easy. You just click it and you're ready to go. The construction, it's plastic fantastic. But combination with the battery, it weighs quite heavy and it feels kind of sturdy. All right, but how heavy is this device? In total, it weighs 212 grams, and that is not a lot. I'll give you like a quick comparison with a chip to chip to device, the X6, for example, that weighs only 165. So, in my opinion, it's not very heavy. So, for the people who do like like having a handheld that this feels kind of, let's say, durable, but still is very comfortable to bring with you because it's not heavy the ps5000 can be a very nice option but okay guys how about the hdmi vga or game console option it works like a charm when you plug in the hdmi cable it will recognize the system instantly so you don't need to tinker around with the settings and it also applies for the controller itself and the plug and play solution works indeed it is not a freaking lie so let's try the controller itself. I already noticed like this thing is going to be awful. There are no shoulder buttons, so only six buttons. So you will be limited when you're playing some games. The HMI signal, I have this idea like it's really low resolution. Like it's not like full HD or 480 or 720p. And again, there is no way of changing any of these things out. The only thing you can do is like pressing select and start. Go to the menu to change out the controls if you have any issues whatsoever. All right, guys, so this is what you're going to get with the PS5000. It's a quite interesting piece of technology. It even works on the rock chip and it's quite powerful to run up to PlayStation 1 and 64. Don't even bother. It doesn't run that great in my opinion. And again, I think they were using like a very old emulator and that's the main problem. You cannot change anything out and edit games, by the way, like a freaking nightmare. You can drag and drop them on an SD card and finding some, let's say, different ways to play them. But then overall, like, it's not super convenient adding them to the system. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.